Before we continue our example of a linear sequential circuit, we will first discuss the rank of a matrix, then we will also discuss the diagnostic matrix and how to compute the reduced form of a linear sequential circuit. The rank of a matrix A is the maximum number of linearly independent rows or columns in the matrix A. So for an M by N matrix, the rank is upper bounded by the minimum of the number of rows and the number of columns in the matrix. And for some matrices, we can find the inverse of a matrix. So here are three different cases that can happen. So if M equals N, so if the number of rows is the same as the number of columns, then if we have the case that the rank of A is M, then we have an inverse of the matrix. And in that case, the inverse commutes. So we have that A times A inverse is the same as A inverse times A, which equals the identity matrix I. And if the rank is less than M, then there is no inverse of the matrix. We can illustrate this by having a square matrix that we call A, and then we can multiply this matrix with its inverse that we call a to the minus one. And this will be equal to the identity matrix that we call I. And for all these matrices, the number of rows equals the number of columns. So we will have a square matrix I. If we instead have a rectangular matrix such that the number of rows M is less than the number of columns N, then if we have the case that the rank of A is M, we then also have a right inverse of the matrix, which is denoted by A sub R inverse. So in this case, the matrix A times the right inverse of the matrix will equal the square identity matrix that we call I. So we can illustrate this in a similar way. So we have the rectangular matrix here that we call A, which has M rows and N columns. If it has rank M, then we have a right inverse to this matrix denoted like this, which has, in this case, N rows and M columns. And when we multiply this, we will have the identity matrix I, which has M rows and M columns. And we can also have a rectangular matrix such that the number of rows is larger than the number of columns. And in that case, if we have the maximum rank of this matrix, that is when the rank of the matrix is N, that is the number of columns, then we know that there exists what we call a left inverse of this matrix. So when we take this left inverse and we multiply it by the matrix A, then we will have the square matrix I. And so here we have our matrix A with M rows and N columns. And if we have rank equals N, then we know that we have a left inverse. So this will also be a rectangular matrix. And in this case with N rows and M columns, and we call this the left inverse of the matrix. And when we multiply these two matrices, we will have the identity matrix with n rows and n columns. When we want to derive the rank of our matrix, we typically do that using Gaussian elimination. And after we have performed our Gaussian elimination, then the number of pivot elements will be the rank of our matrix. So let us consider a matrix over the Boolean ring that we call Z2, so we have the two elements 0 and 1, we have addition modulo 2 as our addition multiplication, and we have multiplication modulo 2 as our multiplication operation here. So we will have an example with a 4 by 4 matrix that is defined as 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then we have the final row 1, 1, 1, 1. And this will be the matrix that we have denoted A. So we will denote this as A as well. So let us do our Gaussian elimination. So we can first note that our first row will start with a 1, 
which means that this one here will be our pivot element for this row. So we just circle this element like this. And for all the other rows, we add the row to the first row and we write the result as the respective row. So we have 0, 1, 1, 0. When we add the second one to the first, when we add the third to the first, we will have 0, 0, 1, 1. And when we add the fourth row to the first row, we will have 0, 1, 0, 1. So this will be our matrix when we have performed our first step in the Gaussian elimination. In our second step of Gaussian elimination, we will look at the second row. So we have the first row already with the pivot element. Then for the second row, we also have a pivot element already. And actually for the third row, we can also see that since the second column here is a zero, then we already have our pivot element for the third row. So we can just mark our pivot elements here. And then for the fourth row, we add it to the second row in order to get a 0, 0, 1, 1. So this will be our next step of the Gaussian elimination. For our next step in the Gaussian elimination, we keep the rows that we already have with our pivot elements. So the, the first, the second and the third row we are done with. And here we can see that the fourth row and the third row are the same. So when we add the fourth and the third row, we will get 0, 0, 0, 0. So if we summarize the number of pivot elements here, we have 1, 2 and 3 pivot elements. So the rank of this matrix here will be equal to 3. And since the dimension of our matrix M, which equals N in this case, is equal to 4, then it means that we do not have an inverse for this matrix. Because we will only have an inverse if these two would be equal. We will now introduce the diagnostic matrix of our linear sequential circuit. The diagnostic matrix is a PR by R matrix, where P is the number of outputs that we have from our sequential circuit and R is the number of state variables that we have. So this diagnostic matrix is written as K, which equals first the matrix C, then we have C times A, then C times A squared, and then we continue until we have C times A to the R minus one, where again R is the number of state variables in our linear sequential circuit. And since it is a PR by R matrix, we have a maximum rank of this matrix, which is R. So there are at most R linearly independent equations that gives us a relation between the starting state and the symbols in the output sequence. So if K has full rank, that is when the rank of K is R, then we will have no equivalent states. But if you have the rank of K, less than R, then it means that there are equivalent states in our linear sequential circuit. So if we have equivalent states, it means that we can write our linear sequential circuit in reduced form. So for the theorem for this is that if we have our matrices A, B, C and H, which are given in this form here, so A will map our state to our next state, B will map our input to the next state, C will map our state to the output, and H will map our input to the output. Then if we have that the rank K equals K, which is in our case we want it to be less than R, because then we can find a reduced form of our circuit, then the reduced form of our A matrix can be written as the matrix T multiplied by A multiplied by the matrix R. And the reduced form of B can be written as T times B. The reduced form of C can be written as C times R. And the reduced form of the H matrix will just be the H matrix again. Because we cannot, by reducing the number of state, have something that is smaller when we want to express the output as the number of inputs because H is independent of the number of states that we have. 
And the T and R matrices are formed as follows. So the matrix T are the first K linearly independent rows of the diagnostic matrix K. And R is a right inverse of the matrix T. So if we look at our matrices, we have that the matrix A maps the current state to the next state. So this must be an R by R matrix. Then the matrix T is the K first linearly independent rows of the matrix K. So the matrix T here, which will be a K by R matrix. And then we have our matrix R, which is a right inverse of the matrix T. So the R matrix must be an R by K matrix. And this will give us the matrix A in reduced form, which when we do this multiplication of the T times A times R, will give us a matrix that is K by K. Then to compute the reduced form of the B matrix, we have first the matrix T, which we know is a K by R matrix, and then we multiply it by the matrix B, which is an R by N matrix. Because B maps the inputs, which are N, to the next state where we have R variables. So when we do this multiplication, we have that the reduced form of the B matrix will be a K by N matrix. And let us also look at the last multiplication that we have, which is when we compute the reduced form of the C matrix. So here we first have the C matrix, which maps our current state to the output. So this matrix must be a P by R matrix. And then our matrix R, which is the right inverse of the matrix T, we have already established that it is an R by K matrix. So the reduced form of our C matrix will be a P by K matrix. So if the rank of our matrix K is not full, then it means that K here is less than R. So the size of the reduced matrices is smaller than we have for the original matrices. And the reason is, of course, that we have fewer state variables in our reduced form of the matrix than in our original matrix. And we have this only if K is less than R.